Hello, I'm Kurt and this is Simple Shop Creations. And in this video, we're going to go through the steps needed to create dot grid paper. Now, if you want to skip the rest of this introduction, just go down in the description below, look for the chapter heading called Start Tutorial and click. Now, you might feel that I'm going off uh, off the ranch here on from woodworking, but I do like to note take, I do like to journal, I do like to, you know, write stuff down more in analog than I do digitally. So here I did decide to say, well, let me go ahead and show people how to create dot grid paper and print it out and you can use it for your note taking and create a notebook. Now I like to make stuff and not only do I like to make wood projects, but I do like to make, um, I guess, home decor or crafty project. So I do make notebooks from time to time and I will go through how to do that, but in later videos. Also, I will go through how to create graph paper and line paper using Libri Office. So let's continue on with this how-to. Now, hopefully, I did say to go down in the description, there will be a link to download Libri Office. So if you don't have it, go ahead and download it, install it. Just take the defaults and you'll be good to go. Let's go ahead and open up a new blank document. And one of the things I want to do is I want to put a, uh, a, a menu here on the side here. I want to take some of these items and switches that you can use and bring it down here. And to do that is we're going to go up to the top left menu bar, select select view and then select sidebar and you see that the properties menu pops up. You can move it anywhere you want. So we'll just leave it right here to the right. Next we want to get rid of the margins and that's done by right mouse clicking somewhere in the middle of the document, right mouse clicking and going to page style. Now since I'm based in the US I default to letter. I'm going to change this to A4 and I'll tell you why in a second. So we'll change this to A4 and then I'm going to remove all my margins zero. So I'm going to take this to zero because I want no margin. So zero and type in zero. Click away and hit OK. You're going to be see a pop-up box show um, pop up and basically says that the margin settings are out of printer range or print range. Do you still want to apply these settings? Select yes. And now we have our margins to the edge of the paper in both left and right and up and down. You can see my blinking cursor over here. Not all printers can print to the end or to, to the edge of the paper. And how do you tell that? Well, two ways. One, you have to look at your specs of your printer or just follow along and then when we're done with this uh, tutorial, print it out and see what happens. If you start getting skewy stuff or it doesn't want to print, bring, bring your margins in all the way around and then try it that way. So once you have your margins removed, all um, set to zero and you're selected A4 paper and you want to know why I select A4 paper and not letter is because when you journal one of the most popular size of a journal book is A5 and to create an A5 journal book you save some money by printing it all on an A4 size paper which is bigger than letter and you just fold it in half and now you have an A5 journal book that's why I selected A4 and you can get um, A4 paper throughout the United States, so it, there's no problem finding A4. And most printers can handle A4 printer that you purchase in the United States. So let's continue on. The next step here is to create some dots. So let's go ahead and find our dot on the keyboard and let's type in one, two. Now pay attention to the uh, dots and let's do another two and see what happened. These two dots on the far left skewed a little bit and they defaulted to some type of ASCII elliptical um, character which we don't want and won't be able to use. So the workaround is to highlight it all, let's delete it, and let's type in two dots and leave it alone. No more dots, just two dots. Let's highlight those two, two dots and let's go over to our properties menu here and let's select a font size. We don't care about the font, we care about the font size. So I'm just going to go ahead and I found out that 11 point font is good don't care about the font, just the size. So we're going to select 11. We go here, you don't really see anything change. So the next step is we want to make a symmetrical square of dots. And so the way to do that is to match character spacing to the font size that you selected. I believe character spacing might be called kerning or something like that. I don't know. You can at least comment down in the you can leave a comment down in the comment if uh, in the comment section if you know. Um, so we're going to go to this this menu item here. We're going to select a down arrow button and we're going to go to the custom value and now you can see it's set to 00, zero uh, PT. So we're going to basically match that. We're going to type in 11.0 dot zero 
space PT. And then we're going to click away. Now, but watch up here to the left, top left, what happens to the dots. So we'll just click away and you see they expand it. So if you want to mess around with your dot size, you want to keep your font size and your spacing size the same. And that should always give you a nice symmetrical dot grid pattern as you go down the paper. So next, we can see we have our two dots. So let's go ahead and highlight them again. I'm going to hit Control C. All right, and then I'm going to click next to the far right dot. I'm going to hold down my Control key, and then I'm going to press the Control V key. And you can hit that a couple times. An easier way is just to hold the Control key down and then hold the V key down and let it rip. So we're going to do about five lines here, and I'm going to stop here. Next, you can select all these by highlighting them all. Or the easiest way is to hit Control A, and then you can right mouse click and do Control C to copy, or go up to Edit and do Copy. But we're not going to do that. We're going to hit Control C again, and now we have it copied. Now we're going to go to the last dot of this line, and then we're going to go ahead and hit Control V, and just keep on hitting Control V until we get to the end of the document. Now, as you can see here, we have carryovers. We got some lines carry over here. Now, if you have a printer that only can print on one side, you're going to have to remove these lines and hit the, hit the backspace, and it should delete it. Let's see what happened here. Aha! Let's try it again. That was a little stuck. Now, let's do it again. Now, we got rid of it. All right. So, again, let's start over. If you have a printer that only can print on one side, just delete that second page by highlighting those dots and use a backspace or a delete key. Now, you have one page. And how do I print on two sides with a one-sided printer? Because you want to put dots on the, one, on the other side, too. So what you do first is you're going to print this out. And then once it comes out of the printer, you're going to take that paper. And most printers will behave this way. You're going to put the paper back into the tray, the dots facing up. And then print again. And that should print the other, the blank side. And it should populate dots on the blank side now. Now, if you have a, a printer that can handle two sides, similar to the one that I use, I can print on two sides. I'm just going to go ahead and... Hit Control V a couple more times, and the same thing's going to happen here. And you can see here, I went to the third page. So now I'm going to take that third page away by highlighting and hit the backspace. And now I should have two pages. Now I just go ahead and do print double sided, and boom, I'll have a double sided print. But there's one thing off about this document here is that they're black dots. And if you go ahead and print this out, you can see how pronounced or how how they stick out when you go to write. On it, uh, black dots are you know um, you can see them. So what we want to do is we want to change that to a different color. So we're going to go ahead and you can hit Control, click somewhere in the document. You can go up to Edit and select Select All, or you just hit Control A and it should select both your papers as you can see here. So I'm going to go back up and then I'm going to go to the colors here on the Properties menu here to the right and then I'm going to select a color that I want. So let's let's, let's just be blunt here and let's go with a a, a, a green so you can see it. So you see the green, you can see it hit both pages. So let's click back in here and hit Control A again. A good color for um, graph paper and or grid paper or dot grid paper is a lighter gray here. So I'm going to go with a three, light gray three here, and then just select it. And you can see it's, it's not as pronounced as the black or the green that you're seeing here. So there, and then when you print this out and you go to write on it, you'll see that the light gray dots will start to, I guess, um, blend into your writing where you don't notice them after you're done writing. So after this, after you create whatever color you want, we need to save the document. But first, I just want to make sure you're aware, just go down into the description below. There'll be a link for LibreOffice. There's also affiliate links. And, you know, just don't forget to, you know, to subscribe and hit that like button, whatever you want to do, because there will be... A couple more videos on how to create a couple more different types of uh, paper. Also, in a future video, we'll be showing you how to create uh, notebooks of various sizes. And I will also maintain creating wood projects um, too. But again, the name of this channel is Simple Shop Creations. So I like to make stuff, not only wood stuff, but I like to make other things because I do have a 3D printer, resin printer, laser engraver. So we're going to start to... Um, veer off and do wood and do some other things that uh, we can do for the household too other than wood projects so once you have this all done what we need to do is go up to file and we want to save as let's see here i already have an uh a4 
dot paper save. So I always name it the size of the paper, the type of paper, and go from there. So go ahead and name it whatever you want. Now notice down here you'll have a selection of different formats you can save in. I suggest that you keep it at ODF, which is open doc, open document format. When you save it at that, most paid office products will have no problems keeping the format of the document if you open it up in that other office writer or office product. So go ahead, name it, and then there, you are done. So I hope everybody has a healthy and wonderful day. We'll see you in our next video.